So what's up everyone, this is Darren Rose Studios, and today we're going to be disassembling the Tokyo Marie Glock 19. Uh, this is a pistol that we've been waiting for for quite some time now, and instead of doing a very useless overview, I'll do an in-depth review later on. But for now, we're just going to go through the disassembly video, is because some people are a little bit confused as to how this works and how it disassembles. And I figured that all out already. Um, it's basically exactly the same like a 17, except with a few extra steps, and some of the internals look slightly different. Particularly the blowback housing un unit, particularly the, hu the hop-up chamber, and a little bit of the hammer side. But otherwise, if you are somewhat familiar with a 17, uh, and you know how to disassemble that, you can disassemble the 19. You just have to be weary of a few things. And in this video, we're going to note all of that... Uh, all of those disassembly notes like I normally do in most of my videos. So uh, first off, uh, when it comes to the Glock 19, it uses a somewhat different magazine. So uh, the reason why I'm starting off talking about this is because the magazine, instead of using a screw to hold the main seal, it now uses a two pins. There is no longer there is no longer a screw that holds the bottom. So what this basically means is that for this particular magazine, it will leak over time. I don't recommend you to buy more magazines uh, for the Tokyo Marie Glock 19, is because in my experience, uh, this stuff will leak very often. Which is the reason why I am not going to be disassembling this magazine, is because that's basically the only thing you need to know about this. Uh, you can talk about other things about the magazine, such as it having an extra cut for a left and right side uh, magazine release uh, slot for it to lock in. This doesn't really matter in Airsoft, it's because we don't have the other side anyways. Uh, this design also exists on the Glock 22 magazine, as you can see right there. But does this actually matter in Airsoft? No. Uh, and the last thing to note about the magazine is that for the Tokyo Marie Glock 19, they have an extra structure over here. You can see it right there. Right, notice how this doesn't have it. Uh, other magazines, like uh, this is a Stark Arms, uh, this is a WE, uh, notice how they all do not have that. Only the Tokyo Marie Glock 19, as of right now, has this structure. Uh, does it actually provide any benefits? So far, I don't really see it. Um, but it does, sort of co uh, it does sort of match up with a different part of the Glock 19, which we will take a look in just a moment. So I'm not going to disassemble this, let's start taking this apart. So making sure uh, that your chamber is clear. Just take a quick look, it should be empty. And then you just pop the slide out from the front, which may require a slight bit of effort, uh, but it should come out fairly easily. So right off the bat, notice that the chassis, it has no bumps at the front. Normally a Glock 17 has a few bumps over here. It does not have that. You will also notice that on the Glock 19, it has a structure here as a support for the magazine. So when you have a magazine here, it actually doesn't wobble as much. It's much more secure. Normally it's meant to wobble a lot more than this. So um, if you if you don't have that structure. So with that structure, it basically holds the magazine a little bit better. Uh, I also noticed that when you insert other magazines that don't have that structure, it holds it just as well, albeit maybe a tiny bit more wobbly. The 19 mag does not seem to wobble as much. Doesn't seem to be noteworthy in my experience so far. Uh, I will talk more about that in my in-depth review in the future. This is a WE mag. Uh, notice how it's not wobbling much either. Oh, sorry, this is a, yeah, WE. And this right here is a Stark Arms. Right, it, it, the, the structure is doing its job. It's just that the benefit does not appear to be uh, like noticeable in a practical sense, like in terms of actually shooting it. Okay. Anyways, uh, I digress. L uh, let's just get on with the disassembly. So after you pop the slide off, uh, drop your hammer, and then just set your frame aside. Now let's start disassembling the slide. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So what you do is that you push the guide rod forward from here, and you should be able to slide it out like this. Now this guide rod disassembles a little bit funny, so it has a support here, it's very similar to a 26. It has a buffer, this is like a plastic buffer, it's sort of similar to a HK45. And then there's a actual rubber buffer at the very bottom of the guide rod. And how you disassemble this is that after you move this part, you just grab here and then you just lift it off like so. Normally this rubber, uh, rubber buffer is at the bottom of the guide rod. 
and then afterwards you slowly release the spring and that's how this comes apart right, it comes apart very easily so uh, you can actually figure this out without me telling you so let me just put this back it's because we don't need to look at the at the spring guide again so simply reattach it like this and then that's your guide rod so this or this part is always facing up now for the chamber now for the chamber the design it is significantly different compared to a 17 it is nothing like a 17 it has a the chamber is different the the hop up dial is different everything about this is different so far even some of the externals of the outer barrel itself is different now in case of you guys ask why is there two guides here what, what's this little thing that's sticking out here for uh, these two areas match up against a, uh, a guide that's literally in the slide itself there's a slot in there and basically what this does is that when you have a chamber in here after your chamber unlocks notice how there's a slant over here after it unlocks it will keep the chamber down the guides will keep it down preventing it from rising up and grinding against the top of your slide this is an excellent design this is actually quite a big improvement however when other people make aftermarket slides i'm not entirely sure if they will implement this design because it adds a bit more complication it's a little bit more complicated to produce i guess because you need to take a blade here and sort of like cut out the inside and after you cut out the inside you might affect the amount of serrations that you can do on the outside but that's another point to talk about some other time so anyways let's just assemble this so normally on a glock you can just slide this out you cannot do it on the 19 what you have to do is that you have to take this part see how it's sort of locked into the plastic outer barrel you have to take the screw out first and then after that screw comes out you can then hold that in place and slip the chamber out like so so this is the disassembly is technically a little bit more gentle because on a 17 sometimes you have to muscle it into the outer barrel especially if it's a metal outer barrel but in this case all you have to do is disassemble the side piece uh, that locks in with the uh, with the outer barrel and uh, that's basically all you have to do you see how it fits in right there there's a slot for it right so set those two parts aside and now you disassemble the hop up dial so with this new hop up dial system you can actually turn the hop up without taking off your slide um, however because the dial is so small uh, I don't know anyone that actually reaches into the chamber with their finger to turn it so what I normally do is just I just take the chamber out I visually look at the hop up uh, rubber as I adjust it Right. Uh, I prefer to do this just because you can actually see the hop-up changing. But uh, I'm not going to talk too much about that because we are going to disassemble it. So take off the screw on the top over here. It's a fairly big screw. It's a... Well, not that big, but it is a large head compared to the other ones. And then you take off this first dial. There's an O-ring over here. Please do not lose this. If you lose the O-ring over here, uh, your hop-up dial will lose its tension. So your hop-up might try to turn itself uh, on its own. And now for this last hop-up dial, you just take it off. And that's uh, where the hop-up arm, uh, that's where it goes into the slit of this dial over here to, for you to adjust the hop-up. Now, uh, this design is actually very similar to some other Tokyo Murray pistols where they have this arm slip into the chamber, sort of, with a small little arm sticking out for the dial. So when you disassemble this, you don't have to be super careful, but you do have to be wary of its position. And I will, I will show you how to assemble this right now before we get into the other internals of the Glock 19. Because, um, so there's only one screw here, and after you take off this run screw, it's just a cover that comes right off. Right, so the hop-up arm is on the left side of the chamber, and then that's your hop your inner barrel and hop up rubber. Uh, this inner barrel is 87 millimeters long, according to my measurements. Uh, and this is just your standard VSR-10 hop up rubber. So obviously VSR-10 compatible, uh, inner barrel is just whatever is it's compatible. It's, it's very generic. Uh, but everything else here for the chamber, it's completely, including the outer barrel, is completely proprietary to this Glock 19 
as of the filming of this video. Will this change? I do not know. So just keep that in mind. Um, I did make disassembly videos of a Glock 17 before, so you guys can watch that if they didn't change anything. So let's teach you guys how to reassemble this now. So normally how the hop-up arm comes out is that, look very closely, you see how there's two square holes. So this is your hop-up arm now. It's very different compared to the 17. And what you do is that you see this long arm, it goes into th this hole first. And after it goes in, you then maneuver, you then maneuver that part right there, this part of the arm, into the second hole on the right side. And after you maneuver it in, it just sort of just sits there, like so. Now, uh, normally you should not flip your hop-up chamber around, but I'm going to flip it around because after this, I will index this notch on the VSR rubber into the hop-up chamber. And after you index it, you get your other half of the chamber, and you simply comes together like that. It's very simple. And then take your screw. Don't tighten it too much. Uh, notice how there's basically not much play between the chamber and the hop-up arm. So the hop-up arm is should be, uh, it shouldn't lopside as easily. Uh, I was hoping, uh, but there's a, still a chance that the hop-up arm can lopside over time. If you don't understand what lopsiding means, basically your hop-up is a little bit like this or a little bit like this. It should be more like this if it lopsides. Um, not a big issue is because you can easily fix that just by rebending it. And now, you see how that part of the arm is like here. So right here you can even you can even touch it and part of the arm is sticking out. So what you do is that you take the hop up dial with the slit and you go over Sorry, I'm looking at the camera screen. And then you simply go over the arm and then that's right there. It's inside the arm already. And then you take your dial. The deep side facing Sorry. I can't see the dial. I need to look at it very carefully. And then basically have your dial sit there. And then you take your stupid screws. Sorry, the camera's right in front of my face, so it's sort of hard to maneuver around the camera. And then that's your hop-up dial. So you turn this to adjust it. Now the hop-up is turned on. So I'm going to turn it more. Right, you can see the hop-up bump. So that's how your hop-up works. So I'm going to turn the hop-up back down. And then afterwards, uh, this is a little bit tricky. So what you do is that I normally position my my chamber like this when I assemble into the outer barrel. And then I slip this part inside here. All right? you can see how that works. And as I slip it in, I try to maneuver the chamber so that... So that it will sit in the right place. Right, so you're basically trying to slip, slip in a wedge in between the chamber and the outer barrel as you do this. Um, it's not that difficult, it's just that it's hard for me to describe the motion, but you guys get the point. I, hopefully I demonstrated that well enough on camera. And that's how your chamber works. Next up is your blowback housing unit. Now, uh, this is the part you guys will not like. Uh, you can strip the threads on your plastic rear iron sight. So when you take out the screw, be gentle. There's only one screw holding the blowback housing unit in place. However, you will notice that the blowback housing unit, it won't come out. Now, the reason why is because this is one of those slides like the Glock 18, 
where it pinches onto your uh, blow-by housing unit. So what you have to do is that you literally have to stretch it out a bit, very gently, don't be too aggressive. And afterwards, your blow-by housing unit should come out. You see how, how I just sort of stretched it and pushed it a bit? And then it just came out. Oh, sorry, the nozzle spring fell out just now. And that's your blow-by housing unit out. So right off the bat, this blow-by housing unit is for the 19 only. This nozzle is for the 19 only. And you'll also notice the structure inside is very different. Uh, it's not compatible with 17, unfortunately, due to the structure. Um, uh, the structure is, is, is very, very different. Uh, if you try to put a Glock 17 blow-by housing unit in here, um, there's some areas that grind up and touch up against the nozzle spring. Um, also, there's the gap over here. If you put it over there, it doesn't seem to sit as well. Although that being said, I have not tried to run a 17 blow by housing unit in here. It, it sort of looks like it fits, but it really, it's really more so for this. So even though some people have imagined do that, it's basically not really compatible. Uh, you can you can clearly tell just by looking at the blow by housing unit, it's nothing like a 17. So uh, one of the first differences that Tokyo Marie made is that they have a detachable back plate. They have the back plate that you can take out now. Uh, not entirely sure why this is necessary, but I guess you can sort of stipple this, which is kind of nice. Not a big deal to me, though. Not important. Um, and the nozzle is very different. So, right off the bat, um, the nozzle spring, there is a slit here. A slit, a guide, uh, an area for the nozzle spring for it to sit in. So it actually sits in quite well. Now, to take out the nozzle, you can... You pull it all the way to the rear and you'll notice that it won't come out. What what you have to do is that you have to rotate it and then it'll come out. Okay, so that's your nozzle. And this is your piston. It's a piston cup. And to disassemble the piston base, all you have to do is just take off the screw. Uh, I'm not going to take it out because there's really nothing worth noting. The threads are on the blowback housing unit itself. Um, and there is a plastic piston base that you can take out really not that important. It's proprietary to this. It won't fit on anything else. Um, so I'm not going to disassemble this. There's no reason for you to take this out anyways. So just know that that's how it works, right? Uh, I will disassemble the nozzle. Now this is a little bit tricky. It's because... So uh, normally on a Tokyo Marae nozzle, you have a rocket valve locker. Uh, in this case, the Tokyo Marae Glock 19, it only uses a pin to hold the rocket valve. This is very similar to a KJW. So what you have to do is you push the pin from the right side and it should come out. And then your the rough side of the pin is on the left side as you can see. Now, uh, now this is the part where you have to be very careful. Uh, so let me redo this. So, uh, well, uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you guys this earlier. When you push out the pin, the rocket valve and the rocket valve spring, it can shoot out because it's really, uh, the rocket valve spring is very strong on the Glock 19 for some reason. So uh, what you have to do is that after you see, you see the pin is partially pushed out, you can see it right there. It's only partially out. What I like to do is that when I have my tool, my punch tool, I use it to keep the rocket valve in place. And after you push the rest of the pin out, that's your pin. Put your finger over the nozzle and then let go. And that's your nozzle and, and that's your rocket valve and rocket valve spring contained. So this rocket valve spring it is stronger. It is much stronger than a normal Glock 17. It also doesn't have that thing that sticks out like this. There's a normally there's like a little thing that sticks out. It does not have that. And the rock and this is the rocket valve. Uh, the design is very different, right? It, it it's nothing. I don't really have anything to compare this to. Um, other Tokyo Mori pistols. There is another Tokyo Mori pistol that has something similar to this, but it's not comparable to um, the the normal Glocks that we know. So it's 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 its own thing. Like it only has one opening at the bottom, a very wide opening. Um, it's closed on the top, 
right? You see how that's completely closed off on the top? And uh, this is just your normal exit. And this is where your rocket valve spring goes over, right? So um, it's, it's quite strange. And when this goes in, there's a certain orientation. Now, uh, it's a little bit tricky. So your rocket valve spring just goes right in. Just make sure it just drops into to the bottom. And your rocket valve goes in like this. So this area, this, uh, let's call it like a rectangular shape area, is pointed up. Now, keeping the orientation there is a little bit difficult. So what I like to do is that you either use a pen or a pencil or a, or a tool, and you sort of make sure you orient the rocket valve correctly. You see how I just, I used my tool and just poked it until I oriented it correctly. And after I do that, I insert the pin partially inside, just partially, and then you use your, your tool poke it down, then push your pin in. After you push your pin in, the rocket valve is then secure. So, so you see, I'm not holding the rocket valve, so it's now all held in, and just push the pin right through until it reaches the other side of your nozzle. Okay. Now I'm just gonna give it a light tap, or a light push. Uh, that's your your rocket valve assembled, so you can see the orientation there. So the rocket, so the rectangular part is facing up, and uh, that's your nozzle. So let's assemble everything back in. So like before, you have this uh, area for your nozzle spring, and then you just rotate it in. Then afterwards, you put your nozzle spring. It just seats in here. There's a bit of play, but it just seats in here perfectly fine. Now, this is the tricky part. So you have to insert this into your plastic slide that snaps into place without this coming off. Uh, if this comes off in the middle of you installing it, you can crush your nozzle spring. So uh, this is my trick for you. My trick for you is that you angle the front in first, put your finger like this, angle the front in first and wedge your blowback housing unit into the slide. And the reason why you wedge it in is because after you wedge it in, you can hold, you don't have to have as much uh, fingers holding your blowback housing unit. Now, and what you do when you reach towards the end, notice how my nozzle spring has not moved. It is still there. And if it doesn't move, if it stays still, you just snap it in place quickly. And now, it works perfectly. Um, it is a little bit tricky. Um, I'm not saying it's easy. You just have to be careful. Because I've seen someone crush their nozzle spring already. You're just going to have to be very careful with yours. Uh, I don't really have a, have a that good of a tip for you, to be quite honest with you. And uh, re this is how you put your slide back. So that's your whole entire slide. Uh, the front sight and the rear sight is just your normal Glock, Glock sights. You can just replace them with whatever you want. Uh, I will be putting a, f a fiber optic front on my own Glock later. Now for the lower frame. Now the lower frame, as you guys can tell, compared to the old Glock, uh, compared to the old Glocks, there is a bit of a different uh, difference. So there is a pin there. Normally, there's no pin on the top over here. This is a Tokyo Marie Glock 18 with an aftermarket slide. There's uh, there's normally nothing there. Also notice that the trigger here is normally plain. On the Glock 19, you get a ridged trigger. Right? Normally you have to buy this aftermarket, but it already comes with a ridged trigger, which I, I'm a big fan of that. Um, actually, the frame of the Glock 19, actually the whole entire 19 looks quite nice. On the right side, the trademarks are actually, you know, looks legit. But on the uh, sorry on the left side looks legit. On the right side has the main Japan markings. That's normal. That's that's as we normally expect, right? Just just like the eighteen and seventeen and twenty two and thirty four. Blah 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 blah. So uh, let's disassemble this. The disassembly of this is a tiny bit different. So, um, but don't worry. I'll walk you through everything step by step. 
So first of all, I'll, as usual, uh, remove your takedown lever. Push your leaf spring down. Sorry. Push your leaf spring down. And then slide your takedown lever left or right side. It doesn't really matter. You can slide it from whichever side you're comfortable with. Right, and that's your takedown lever. You just have to push the leaf spring down. Uh, I, I bent my leaf spring to make it stronger so that it, it's, it holds the takedown lever with a bit more force. Uh, this is just my personal preference. Now, the next thing that you do is that you don't remove the screw. You actually take out the trigger pin and the top pin. You can remove this. So, uh, how do you go about doing that? Now, uh, if you're if this is if your Tokyo Mori Glock 19 is brand new, uh, what you have to do is that you have to punch it in this side. So basically, right now you're supposed to take a hammer and punch it like this. However, because I already disassembled mine, I reversed the pin already. So for me, I punch it in this side. But for your Glock, you will have to punch it in from the left. I'm punching it from the right. Okay. See, notice how when it came out, the rough side is on my is on my uh, left side. Uh, this is just my personal preference. If you guys watch my uh, Glock 17 disassembly video, you guys will also know I do the same thing. Now, after you punch out this pin, uh, be wary that you can now take your slide release off, and you also be careful that when you're punching out your trigger pin, you can damage your slide release. So make sure you don't damage this. If you damage this, your slide lock might not be as reliable. Uh, or it might get jammed or it might not work as, or it might not function properly. Uh, if you accidentally bend this, you just take it to a gunsmith and hopefully he can sort you out. So that's your slide release and your slide release spring. Uh, the next pin you take out is the, is, the, is the top pin. Now this top pin is weaved into the trigger return spring. You can see it right there. It's weaved into it. So what I normally do is that I just punch it out from this side. Now, after I punch it, notice how I did not take the punch out immediately because now your punch is now holding the spring. So put your finger right here in case if it flies off and slowly take out your punch. And that's how you manage and control your trigger return spring. So the circular part is where the pin goes. The narrow part is where it hooks onto your trigger return spring. This is the narrow part. This is the circle part that goes into the pin. So let's set that aside. And this is your pin. That's your pin. Notice that it has a notch on it. So now, uh, let's disassemble the frame. Now, up to this step, the disassembly is the same as usual. You just take off your front pole screw. So that's your front pole screw out. And now, because there's no trigger return spring, you can just take your chassis out. Now, uh, the leaf spring is secure. Sorry, that's the leaf spring right there. It's secure, it won't fall on its own anyways, so just, just be wary that's there. Just set that aside, and this is right here is your safety. This is the safety thing that where you slide this like this, it will uh, prevent you from pulling your trigger. Now, in my case, I cut off the, the safety, so I completely disabled the safety on my Glock 19. And the reason why is because you don't need it. Now, I don't need it, and I don't want this to accidentally malfunction and then cause me to not be able to pull my trigger. So right off the bat, I just, just completely lobbed off the safety because I'm, I'm never going to use it anyways. Uh, I, I think you guys sort of know this already. If you're a gamer, you probably don't need this. Just get rid of it. Um, but ultimately, this is just my personal preference, right? If you watch my video on how to, this is, on how to tune your Glock 17 frame, no, I actually did the same thing. Now, for the rest of the stuff over here, it's just like usual. Punch out the rear pin, take off a screw, and that's it. Uh, rear hammer assembly pin. 
and then the screw. So that's the rear screw. Set that aside. Now, how do you manage the valve knocker disconnector spring? Is put your thumb as close to the valve knocker uh, disconnector spring uh, disconnector as you slowly take the take the hammer assembly out, and then your thumb is now on the chassis, and that's how you take it out. And now the trigger bar is on the side here. Just slowly weave it out. It should come out fairly easily on its own, like that. It just sort of there's a slot in here where it goes into. Just take it out gently. You don't need any force. And then here is your valve knock, knock, knocker uh, disconnector spring. So what you do is you relieve the, its tension first, take this out, and then that's your spring. And then that's all, that's all your springs all managed. So you don't need to worry about them flying off now. Now, uh, right off the bat, the trigger bar is uh, quite thick. It's like the one that they use on the 22 and, 7, on 22 and 34. However, on the Glock 19 one, it looks a little bit thicker. It's a little bit beefier here. At least that's the difference that it looks like in my eyes. Uh, I might be slightly wrong, but it looks a little bit different. The slot is a little strange, to be quite honest with you. As well as the chassis shape, you can tell the chassis shape is different. It's not exactly the same as before. It's just a tiny bit different. Not a huge difference, but it is a little bit different. This side looks the same. Uh, this is the structure that that uh, supports the magazine, prevents it from moving, and uh, that's basically it. And the rest of this assembly here is just like a regular uh, regular Glock housing, but I'm going to do it for you anyways. So what you do, punch out the pin, should come out just like that. And after you do that, your sear and the spring here can come out. Now, what I normally do is that I normally push the hammer back a little bit so I can unhook the spring. And then after you unhook it, you can take out your sear, which just falls out just like that. It looks a little bit different compared to the normal one, but it is still, uh, looks like it's still compatible with normal Glock 17 sear. Uh, it has a, it has marked number two. I'm not entirely sure why they have these new markings to say it's number two. Uh, it doesn't look anything different, not really. A little bit has that, I guess, but it doesn't look anything different. It looks like it's still compatible with 17 internals over here. It's just that the chassis is different. Um, anyways, moving on. Let's assemble the last pin. The last pin, just push it out just like before. After you push it out, that's the pin right here. Uh, it has, it looks like that. Right, I'll teach you how to reassemble that in a moment. And then afterwards, you will have your hammer rotor and hammer spring and valve knocker all in your hands. And that's your whole rear has, uh, rear uh, hammer assembly disassembled. Uh, one thing worth noting, the hammer looks a bit different. So notice it also has the number two on it. N I have no idea what that really means. But so far, notice how the structure it's a bit different compared to a normal Glock 17. There's, there's a bit of an extra structure over here. It's a little beefier. Now, uh, what is, I don't really know why Tokyo Mori did this yet. Not sure. But uh, it is there, an extra bit of structure. Uh, you can tell there's normally, there's normally not that there. But, uh... uh yeah, the, I don't really know what to really to tell you yet because I don't really know how to justify some of these differences, but um, anyways, uh, I already did do a striker test, so my hammer spring, my stock hammer spring, has been modified a bit to prevent light striking. So what you do is place your hammer spring like that, the long arm out, short arm in, and then you index the long arm in like that. And when you index it, you will see the spring rest like that. Now after it rests, you align, there's a hole here for you to align, and you align it f so you can insert your pin. Notice how the, the, the wide pin on the top side and the here is thin. You weave that in first. Now after you weave that in, you can hold your hammer, uh, it can hold your hammer in place. But don't weave it all the way through. After you do this, take your valve knocker, cock your hammer a little bit 
so you can slip in your valve your valve knocker like that okay after you slip it in move it into pos position and now you're weaving the hole for the hammer and the valve knocker all together now i have to do this by feel because the camera is right in front of my face so i cannot see this so i have to do this all by feel now there we go you see how that works you just weave it you're just you're just weaving the pin through through the valve knocker and the hammer that's all that's that's all you're really doing right notice how you can do this all toolless and now you take your sear right side then you take your pin weave it partially through the pin not all the way because you have to take your return spring your sear return spring and sorry I dropped it by accident. Sorry about that. Uh, you have to take. See, that's the disadvantages of having Maine Coons at home. You have fur everywhere. Anyways, as I was saying, this is what you do. You simply put this arm rest on here. See that right there? It rests right there. So you have to make sure it rests on the arm and then you weave your pin through. Okay, so now my pin is weaved through and then this arm, what you do is that you cock your hammer and then you lift, push your valve knocker up and then you weave it into the uh, valve knocker. Again, sorry, the camera's in front of my face so I cannot see the... Yep, there we go. And you just weave it right there. Just make sure it's secure. And then this is your hammer, all assembled. Okay, so it works. Let me cock it. Locked in place. Okay, so it works. Next, put your disconnector spring, your valve knocker disconnector, trigger bar. This, everything here is just very similar to a 17 so you don't really have to pay that much attention but uh the, the trigger the trigger return spring i'll give you guys a tip in a moment so just seat it in make sure everything's seen working properly and now secure it with your screw now because the threads are plastic please be gentle with your threads your screw should go into the pattern very uh don't destroy your threads they go in a certain way and you you just take good care of your threads. Don't strip your plastic threads. And now take a trigger turn. Okay, so that's your rear disassembly. Oh, by the way, there's a plastic part in here. I'm not so sure how that really comes out, but for now, I'm just gonna leave that in there. Oh, I should have done this earlier too. Uh, the magazine release spring. So. Let me, I'll just quickly show you this anyways. So you see that spring right there? This long arm. Unhook it with your finger. So how you see how I just moved it? I just moved it this way. And then afterwards, your mag release just comes right out. It has a metal support there. Looks a little bit different compared to the ones I'm used to seeing, but not entirely sure. I, I highly doubt you'll change it anyways. So anyways, um, so how you reinstall it, you basically push it through here and make sure it goes all the way through your frame so like normal. And then you simply take your finger, put it in there, and then move your spring uh, back. You see how there's a, how there's like a little slot right there? You ba the goal is basically move the spring back in there. So I'm going to use a tool instead of my finger so you guys can see a little bit clearer. Sorry, okay. You know what? I'm going to have to do this with my finger. I'm sorry, guys, because I cannot see. Yep, okay. Now you see how that's hooked into that slot. 
there's a slot on the mag release and that's how you hook onto it. Now assemble the rest of your frame, put your safety in. Because I, dis because I disabled mine, I don't have to worry about the position anymore. Uh, when you assemble yours, make sure the safety is uh, facing forward if you can. And now put your chassis on. Make sure the leaf spring does not get in the way. Now, install the screw. And because it's also plastic threads, don't strip it. Um, for the Tokyo Murray frames, uh, people normally add epoxy to strengthen the front of the frame. I will do that. I'm not doing it right now because obviously I'm on camera and I don't have time to do it right now. Because I need time for the epoxy to cure but don't turn the screw too tight. Now, up to this point, uh, you need to weave your trigger pin and put your trigger return spring back on. So this is a little bit tricky. So first, it goes in like so. Weave it on. And then your spring should look like that. Okay, now after you weave it on. Why is everyone always messaging me at this hour? Now what you do is that I just quickly push it in. Still. Have... Oops, I got caught on the notch. Yep, and that's how you push the pin through. It's, uh, I don't really have a good way to describe it for you guys. You're, you're basically, in order to push the pin through, you're, you're basically, pl you're playing a game where you're weaving the spring, uh, where you're weaving a pin through the spring and through the chassis. That's basically all, all you're doing. Uh, it's a little bit time consuming. In my opinion, I like the old method better, but, um, but it, if it makes this pin there, uh, for the Glock, it looks it does look a little bit better to have a pin there, so I, I don't mind Tokyo Murray doing that this time. But uh, yeah, and then your trigger, your slide release. So have your arm rest on this hook on your slide release. Have it rest like that, and it goes into a slit in between your trigger and your tr and your frame. And now this is another weaving game, and now this is the reason why I have my pin go the other way. So after you're weaving the, the slide release, notice how I can move the slide release and you can see it right there, right? After you weave everything through, take your trigger pin and see it went most of the way through just with my hand. Now, if you don't cut the safety or if your safety is back like this, it will interfere with your trigger. Uh, and if you also, uh, if something is not aligned, your pin will not go in very smoothly. If everything is aligned, this should go in as easily as how I made it look just now. Okay? And now with the rough side here, all you have to do is just top it off. And that's it, right? Take down lever, uh, like so, put it in. Push your leaf spring down, and uh, that's your whole Glock 19 dis uh, assembled. Yep, so everything works. So this is what I mean about the safety. After I turn my safety, I can still pull my trigger, right? So it doesn't really matter what position this th this is in anymore. So if I can have it on, I can still pull my trigger, right? So that's the whole entire uh, assembly and disassembly. I, I hope it was useful for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. And I hope it helps you work on your own Glock 19. So uh, peace guys, happy shooting. Thanks for watching.